In this video, we're going to take a look at bank rules in Xero. I'm going to show you how to quickly set one up and I'm going to show you some tips on getting bank rules to work for you. Let's head into Xero and take a look. Okay, let's take a look at bank rules in Xero. The best place to set up a bank rule is from the act bank rec. Yes, you can go to the banking menu, but it's easier to do it from a transaction. So we're going to head to the bank rec and we're going to find a transaction. So we've got a payment to the post office and there's no surprise, this is going to be for postage. So how do we create the bank rule? Simply go to options, the drop down and select create bank rule. Now zero almost does it for you. So the pay is going to equal post office. That's absolutely fine. Who's the contact? And we want to enter it here. So the contact is going to be post office. We don't need to do anything with number three where we, where we would allocate fixed values. We can head down to number four description. Postage is going to be fine. The code we're going to use, no surprise, is the postage code. The reference, now we're going to be lazy. We don't want to input it. So we're going to say, just pick it up from the reference. The bank account, we only have one bank account in this company, so we're going to say current account. If we had more than one and we wanted to select them all, we could do. Current account here is fine. And then give the rule a name that makes sense. So I'm going to just say post office and postage and save. Now when we head back to our bank rec, Zero has done the transaction for us. It's going to automatically apply that rule if we click on OK. If we're unsure, we can select View Details just to double check. Selecting View Details just shows us exactly what the rule is going to do. We would also select View Details if we had some backup to attach and we would do it here. If we're happy, we could save the transaction. Or if we knew from the start that we we're going to be happy, we can simply go to OK. I'm going to skip the next line and then I'm going to go to another one and I'm going to create another rule. So again, options, create bank rule. And again, it's easy to understand what this is about. If we're making a payment to a train company, we kind of get what that's for. So let's say the contact is going to be, we can say, actually, I'm not going to say train company, I'm going to say train travel. We don't need to do number three and we go straight to four. And again, the description is going to be train travel and we're going to pick up a travel code. The reference, again, let's be lazy, say pick it up from the reference, run this rule on the current account, train, and we're going to change that to travel. So there I've shown you two options of creating a bank rule from the transactions on your bank reconciliation. Now back on the bank reconciliation screen and we can just select OK because the rule is working for this transaction. Now, anybody that's used bank rules on a regular basis will know, although they're great, they can be temperamental. Let's look at this transaction here. It's a transaction for the post office. It's postage again, and we would have expected the rule to be picked up. Why hasn't it worked? Have a quick look at the details, and I'm going to give you a clue. The previous transaction, the payee was post office. This time, it's a description. Now it might change because you have changed bank accounts. It might be that you've imported a bank statement. It might be that your bank feed has changed. You could have had a Yodley feed and you've gone to a direct feed. So although things look very much the same as before, there can be subtle differences going on behind the scenes. So what do we do? Well, let me give you some tips on bank rules. We're going to go to options and we're going to create bank rule, except we're not, I'm just going to go through that route to get to the bank rules. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the rule that we would have expected to work. And we're going to study it. So when we study it here, we can see that it's only going to work if the payee equals the post office. Now you might recall that on that one we looked at, it wasn't the payee, it was the description. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to amend the rule. I'm going to say add a condition and I'm going to say 
description. And I want it to say contains rather than equals because sometimes it might contain an additive but there might be other information added to it. I'm going to go back to the line above and I'm going to change that to contains as well. So if it said post office and the name of a place, for example, it would still work because it contains post office. I'm going to do one other thing. If you look carefully at the top here, this rule is only going to work if all of these conditions are met. So we're going to change the all and we're going to switch it to any. Scroll down. I'm quite happy for the contact to say post office. I'm quite happy with the description. I'm happy with everything else. I'm going to save the rule. Now let's go back and see and brilliant, now it has worked. So again, looking at the details, the description is post office. Because we've tidied up the bank rule, it will now work if the pay is post office or if the description is post office. We changed the word into say contains and also we changed it so that it only had to match one item. And then we just say okay because we're happy with it. Now look at another line. This time we've got a payment and it's been made to the other train company. Let's go to options and create bank rule, but I'm only doing this to get to the bank rules place. I could, instead of gone to accounting, I could have gone to bank accounts and I could have chosen bank rules. Takes me to the same place. Now I'm going to choose the rule I've called train travel and you can see that it didn't work because the payee wasn't equal in train company and if you remember, it was called Other Train Company. Let's change this to Contains. We're going to say Save and we're going to go back. Now, sometimes you might have a little bit of playing around, but now you can see that it has worked because it's picking up the transaction because the payee contains the two words Train Company. So you sometimes need to be smart. You need to think about what will work for the bank rule. You don't want to have to be changing bank rules, creating new bank rules all the time. I'm just going to go back to it very briefly. So we're going to go to accounting, bank accounts, and we're going to choose bank rules, and we're going to pick up the train travel. So PE contains train company. So if it said other train company or train company, that would be fine. Now, if you had a different name, you could say payee and this time contains and let's say you use virgin train so it might be that it contains the word virgin. Now you'll need to change one thing here because you're not going to find a transaction where the payee contains train company and it contains virgin so you would change the all to any. Scroll down to the bottom and save. Now we didn't need to do that but if it had been virgin trains that would have worked and we're happy back on the bank rec, all that we need to do is okay. So play around with your bank rules until you get them to work the way you need them to. As always, if you like my videos, please let me know that you like them. And why don't you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when new videos are uploaded each week. Until next time, happy zeroing.